Hey, welcome back to the show. The Creep Show? <laughs> I'm sorry, scary pun Samantha will soon go away, just in time for insufferable fall Samantha to arrive. Speaking of insufferable, death. Of course, we're all scared of the inevitable, but as I recently learned, confronting mortality doesn't always have to be a downer. Death. If you're like most of us, you're avoiding it like, well, death. No. And not only is death the leading cause of not living, uh, Sam? but as an industry, it's also plagued with inequality, exploitation, and unsustainable practices. This is Dr. Jamie Edie Chisholm, and she knows the source of this problem. It's that we're fundamentally scared to even talk about death. The challenge is we don't do grief well here, and we don't know how to talk about grief. So if I have a group of people together, I say on the count of three, we're just going to say the word death. Let's, let's try it. Okay. One. One, two, two three. Three. <gasps> death. <laughs> it's hard. Uh. Start low and then keep practicing until you can actually say it. You don't have to say it today. Or tomorrow or ever. If we can't even say the word, how can we begin to address all the issues surrounding it? Luckily, there's something to help us. The death positivity movement, which surprisingly was not invented by goth teens. It's actually a group of funeral directors, social workers, and just regular people who think there's a better way to die. So death positivity, we are trying to really be activists for death and dying, right? All of us are going to die. And I honestly think we're probably going to lose our minds soon if we don't figure out a way to acknowledge our grief. And this billion dollar industry tells us that grieving is found through fancy caskets, black clothes and lots of rain. But one way the death positivity movement is helping people rethink that that word is by modeling funerals after that one other time we gather our dysfunctional families in fancy outfits, weddings. I'd be much more into thinking about my own death if it involved cake tastings. Cocktails, though. And cocktails. Yeah. And while you'd turn to Martha Stewart to create your dream wedding, why not come to Samantha B to plan your perfect death? First step, you need a good planner sort of how weddings have become really individualized when it's all about the couple getting married this can be all about that person who died this is Lori Zaspel, a death doula yes that's a thing a death doula is a non-medical support person who helps dying individuals and their families through the completely natural process of dying doulas can help make your perfect death a reality burial at sea wicker casket macrame shrouds and even i've had folks go to sports games and have a funeral at a sports game or a tailgate and chugging a 40 isn't the only way to personalize your funeral a coffin can look like whatever you want it to look like our bodies can be processed more environmentally friendly ways or buried in a green burial space so thinking outside the box Pun intended. <laughs> yes, green burials have become all the rage with the kids and 91-year-olds. I heard about a green burial, and I decided, yes, I will go for the green burial. Cremation was actually toxic, and I'm an environmentalist, so that bothered me. This is Shotzi Weisberger, a retired nurse and vocal member of the death positivity community. Like most things we've done forever as a society, embalming, cremation, ornate coffins, and concrete all have unsustainable impacts on the environment. So it's time for a green solution. My body will have no casket and it will start to deteriorate. And then something will grow. Maybe just weeds, but perhaps a bush or a tree, uh, flowers. And so I feel that my death and my deteriorating body is bringing life into the world. So that pleases me. I like that idea very much. And Shotzi took it a step further when she recently threw her own funeral. A funeral is a funeral while you're still alive. We had booze, we had wine, and good food, and uh, the singing. And I think that death need not be terrifying. I'm so curious about it. It's so mysterious. I've never done it before. I want to experience it. Wow, now there is someone who is ready to party with death, unlike me. Surprise! Thank you. 
Now, after you've picked your funeral playlist and a banging outfit, it's vital that you write it all down and put someone you trust in charge of your death wish. Ultimately, it is your death wish that tells us how you want to be treated as you get closer to the end of life. Coincidentally, I actually want Charles Bronson as part of my death wish. And these documents aren't just about the fun stuff. It's about having a quality even after you're gone. If you think about funerals, it is sort of catered to white, cis, Christians. And so if you identify as anything other than that, um, they don't take your needs or your culture into consideration. We have seen in the past when a trans person dies suddenly, their family of origin inherits their remains and has misgendered them in their death and buried them under their name assigned at birth. In order to start addressing these important issues, we need to stop running from death. death. Ugh, this guy who keeps chasing me. Talking about death does not summon death the same way as talking about the rain does not summon the rain. Yes, and once you get to know me, you'll see that deep down, I'm actually really fun. And in the process of making friends with death, we also create a more progressive industry. And we can make sure that death never surprises us. Yes, who? It's obviously you. Sam? Come on, Sam. Aw, thanks for watching. If you'd like to hear more from Full Frontal, hit subscribe and visit our page for more videos. Or if you'd like to be radicalized, leave YouTube on autoplay.